Karina, baby, I remember how many times I read you the same books, right? I used to read you the same books all the time because those are the books that you like to pick out. And, you know, I always used to read you the same books anyway for, you know, Dr. Robert Titzer for the Your Baby Can Read program and the Your Baby Can Discover program. So I'm like, need to pick a new book soon, which I will when I get back home. Um, but for right now, we're doing surprise laundry for the 23rd of April. One morning, Katie Kitten was helping with the laundry. Ma Perkins filled a big basket with wet clothes to be hung out to dry. There were more than usual today. Pa Perkins was helping, too. I'll carry the basket, he said. And I'll help pin the clothes on the line, said Katie. Katie took the clothespin bag into the garden and handed Pa some pins. They hung up pajamas, pants, three wool sweaters, and a shirt. These are all my things, said Papa. Then Katie helped Pa to hang up a shirt, blouse, and nightgown belonging to Mama. Then Katie helped Pa to hang up a skirt. Oh. Any more? asked Pa with a smile. When Katie looked in the basket, she got quite a surprise. Right at the bottom was a tiny dress, socks, undershirt, and pants. These look like mine, said Katie, but they're too small. Oh dear, said Pa. They must have shrunk in the wash. Katie ran inside to tell Ma Perkins what had happened. All my clothes have shrunk, cried Katie. Ma Perkins laughed. They weren't your clothes, she said. They belonged to an old rag doll of mine. I thought I would wash her clothes and brush her hair and give her to someone special. Just at that moment, moment Katie looked sad. Who, she asked. Why, you, of course, said Mama. Oh... So she was like, who are you going to give that to? Who's special, right? And Mama's like, you're special, baby. Right? Because all babies, all, all parents are like, oh, that's my baby. My baby's special. So Cassie at the bat. The lookout wasn't brilliant for the mother of nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Coney died... At first, the bellows did the same. The sticky silence fell up the pardons of the game. A struggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hop, which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought of only Cassie could, be, could but get a wick at bat. We'd put up even money now with Cassie at the bat. But Finley... But Flynn proceeded, Cassie, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was the Lulu and the latter was a cake. So upon the striking multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let, let drive a single to the one at mat of all and Blake, the much despised tore the covers off the ball, and when the dust had lifted and the man saw what had occurred, that was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. And from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell, it knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was an ease in Casey's mummer as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, repose, when, when responding to the cheers, he lightly dwarfs his hat. No stranger in the crowd could double was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And when the whiting pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eyes a sneer curled Casey's lips. And now the leather covered spear 
came hurling through the air, and Casey stood uh, watching in the hearty, uh, the hardly grown there, close to the study basement and ball on heathed spread. That ain't my style, said Casey, strike one, the umpire said. From the benches, black with people, and went up a mufflin roar, like the beating of a storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill him, the umpire shouted someone on the stand, and it's likely that they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage, visage sheen, he stilled the rising triumph, his blade, the game, go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the sphere flew, and Casey still ignored it, and the umper said strike two. Ferdy cried and molded thousands and echoed, answered Freddy. Oh, an, an echo answered fraud. But one scornful look from Casey and the audience was a, a wed. They saw the face grow, go steam and cold and saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lips. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds his with curl. He he pounds with cruel violence. His bat upon the plate, and now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by a fierce of Casey's blow. Oh, somehow in the favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light, and somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout, but there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Oh, he didn't strike in, he struck out. So, he was playing baseball, and he didn't get his, he didn't get his, his strike. He didn't get to run to base. All right, let's do, oh, say, say, oh, playmate, come out and play with me, and bring your doll, these three, climb up my apple tree, shut down my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. It was a sunny day, she could not go out to play, she said with tearful eyes, my dolly's got the flu. Boo hoo 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 hoo. I ain't got no rain barrel. I ain't got no cellar door. But we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. Karina, baby, I just want you to know how much I love you and how much I miss you. If I could be there with you today, I would be. I definitely would be. Life really just isn't fair. It's not fair. But we keep moving forward, and hopefully I'll get to see you soon. I love you, baby.